Hello everyone, this is Mark with Semantics Research with the Daily Report. So we take a look at the markets overall. We were bid after a gap up in many names with materials leading, followed by communications, financials, and discretionary. Basically many beat up names that were sold off massively in the past few weeks were likely rising due to uh, short covering and repositioning. It was a rather choppy day on the ES after initial rally in the morning session and the market had no real direction as it chopped around at the highs until grinding higher towards the end of the day. If we take a look at the housing data, we saw that the new home sales were up 10.7% month over month which surprised to the upside and this rise is, the f is in the face of higher mortgage rates while average home prices are falling. It is likely due to the limited supply due to a two year low in home builder sentiment as inflation and mortgage rates hamper demand. And if you look at the consumer sentiment that was revised today, we made historic lows as it is plunging across all demographics largely. Many are expecting worsening economic conditions and it is the high at the highest since 2009. Inflation continues to be a concern and there is a high level of uncertainty with the consumers. Very interesting is looking at oil volatility or OVX. There was a very interesting action in the last few sessions as it seems like we would gap up uh, on the Euro and Asia session and sell off during the US cash open. There is not a lot of strong volume in the market so far so you can see many beat up names having short covering and coming to the end of the quarter you, you probably see position, positioning rebalancing but nothing has really fundamentally changed especially about the oil supply issue and generally speaking when you see weakness in energy you see a rotation to tech and discretionary and it is likely that longer time frame sellers are waiting for higher prices to open more positions and if we take a look at WTI crude it is down way more relatively to Brent which is quite interesting when summer ends and winter is a pr um, starts to approach, there is a big uh, question of how the Eurozone reacts to the Russia sanctions and the impact from the sanctions. And it is likely that as we open up from the lockdowns in the world, it will bring out more demand for energy. And the only real risk to the oil idea is a deep recession. I think eventually it is possible that when there is peak fear, we may see the market potentially bottom and rally. It could be the next GDP number or perhaps even after midterm elections if we see gridlock as it creates more certainty. And when you have a gridlock, you don't, um, nothing really gets passed. So you don't see any drastic fiscal stimulus or anything of that sort. We also must understand that the market is forward looking and it always leads ahead of the economy. But if we do have an extremely deep recession, then I would suggest that we have much more downside to go. Also, if we take a look at the shape of the yield curve, it has different different implications depending on parts of the economic cycle. So example is if we're flattening during the economic slowdown, it means that banks are going to originate fewer loans and make fewer profits as there is less mortgages, less IPOs, less mergers, etc. Um, and you, you'll see financials be a, a great performers in early or mid cycles. And when we are seeing banks talking about recession, it generally signals that we are quite late in the cycle and Generally, financials perform very poorly in the late cycle since you see less consumer spending due to slowdown and contraction. But when you, when you think the cycle is going to churn and go into expansion again, that is when you want to buy these heavily sensitive sectors like financials, consumer discretionary, and tech. But the question is, how deep do we go before churning? So if you do think this is a this is a churn, then you want to be you you do want to buy these economically sensitive sectors because they do outperform in the beginning of the cycle. Um, 
like I mentioned before, financials, consumer discretionary tech, and also real estate. So those actually benefit from people spending more money. Going over to Fed, you know, the Fed has very little influence on what drives inflation as they must induce recession at this point to bring down inflation. So we must bring down energy prices, food costs, and fix the supply chain, which is not something the Fed could do, but they could kill demand. If we do get clarity in what the future holds and inflation rolls over, then I think that is when we will rally hard. Um, the Fed rate expectations do have been going down, so we do have some l less fear. And if we were to have lesser Fed rate hike expectations, and as we get closer to the calendar year where we maybe start seeing the Fed expected to be uh, cutting rates, then that could bring the risk-free rate down, and that is quite bullish. Also, if also you know you tend to see retail always entering late into the trade as institutions are already entered and they position themselves and retail tends to come in towards the end of the trade and that is when the trade becomes overcrowded and it is likely we priced in most most of the recession by now just the only thing is if we have a deep recession or even a stagflationary uh, situation that could uh, cause more risk to the downside Also, we do have to note that the world's economy can be in a worse state, but the U.S. economy will always outperform the, the world's economy. So even if, the, if Europe goes into a deep recession, the U.S. tends to be more robust and recover much more quickly. Now, if you look at the copper futures, we can see that it's falling off a cliff. And copper is generally an indicator of growth or contraction. You would see copper prices go higher as there is more demand because uh, copper is actually heavily used in um, home construction. So when you see a period of growth and real estate does well, then you would see copper prices soar because of the high demand. And right now it seems like we have excess supply with a uh, massive surplus despite lockdowns causing supply chain issues so this means that when things do open up fully there might be a, a huge influx in supply and it seems like copper is currently signaling this and perhaps um, we're seeing growth contracting rapidly as well and that is it for today's recap i want to thank you all for watching I hope you all have a nice weekend, and I will see you next week. Be sure to check out the link in the description for more updates. And do subscribe and like the video if you do find our content valuable or even entertaining. Thanks again.